Welcome everybody to the Bill for Anything podcast. My guest today is Channing Beamer. Like the car. Like the car. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. No problem, no problem. Y'all should I'm, see the setup. Like, <laughs> it's like everything. I getting all it. of the tips. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I'm excited to have you on. You have we're gonna have some really, really good conversation. I'm I excited. feel it. Yeah, it'll um, be good. Introduce yourself to the people. Tell them a little bit about yourself. Got it. Um, hi, people. My name is Channing, Channing Beamer, and uh, I am the founder and editor in chief of cnkdaily.com. Um, I live here in Dallas, and I'm I'm happy to be here. I'm excited to to start talking about CNK and business and all of the all of the good deep stuff we Some sneaker <laughs> we culture. previously talked talked yeah. about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, tell us what what does CNK stand for? Uh, CNK actually stands for Chicks and Kicks. Okay. Uh, we started CNK. Well. The idea for CNK was birthed like in 2013. Uh, I ran a music website called Chanlo.com and I was looking for some new content and I've always been a big fan of sneakers. And to be honest with you, I Googled like chicks and kicks or some obscure sneaker reference about women and everything that popped up was like girls in Jordans and like bathing suits or lingerie. And I was like, oh no, (laughs) (laughs) oh no sis. So um, long story short, I got rid of Chanlo.com and I really kind of went with my gut with CNK. Uh, we launched in November of 2015 and we're about to about to celebrate our third anniversary. That's what's up. So, That's what's up. Yeah. So tell us where did where did the the fascination or the love for just the whole sneaker culture where did that start with you? Um, well, I'll say my love for sneaker culture started just like with everybody else's with the actual shoe, right? So um, growing up, I had brothers and I was always <laughs> relegated to like the pay less special with mm-hmm. like the, the light up joints, like I got those. And then finally I graduated to a pair of Cortezes and mm-hmm. I didn't look back, like those were my joints for years. And obviously like mama was in charge of the budget. So I never really got to get J's and all that stuff, but mm-hmm. I got my Cortezes every year <laughs> mm-hmm. and my K-Swiss and my Saccone and all of that stuff. But I've always just been a fan of comfort. Like I had my phase of like heels and walking awkwardly and all of that stuff. And I finally got to an age where I'm just like, listen, I wear tennis shoes. That's mm-hmm. my thing. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't hurt nobody. Mm-hmm, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, that's that's kind of how that evolved. And then sneaker culture as a whole, I really, I really started embracing it um, a little bit before I, I started seeing K. Um, I think one thing people don't really r- realize is how deep and entrenched sneaker culture is. Like, oh, yeah. you're in sneaker culture if you love sneakers, oh, right? Yeah. But um, the one thing that I wanted to make sure that I did and continue to do is really study the culture. Um, just because we're in it doesn't mean that we know everything about it. Mm-hmm. And I found like when I really started studying and really started to talk to people, especially women sneaker collectors who have been here since free lunch, basically, like mm-hmm. I really started realizing how how much this culture means to people, how people have really been able to feed their families mm-hmm. off of shoes. And um, and it's, it's a lot more than the sneakers, right? I mm-hmm. think a lot of people look at it as some sort of like vain. They do. Yeah, some, they do. like a, a vanity thing. Mm-hmm. And you know, yeah, there's, there's like the hype beast stuff, whatever, but ultimately like this, this sneaker game has really been a game changer for a lot of people, including myself. Um, sneakers is where I found my purpose so I think that sneaker culture as a whole is a lot deeper and a lot bigger than people give it credit for but I'm just I'm honored to be a part of it yeah I know we had a conversation yesterday yeah and I'll talk to you about you know the whole sneaker culture and coming from New York and how it's to me the transition from New York to Dallas like I saw that there was such a big difference yeah. because in New York it seemed like everybody was on it they, it's like the capital for a lot of the places. We talk lines about around kids, the corner. Lines around the corner. <laughs> Nike town. Like I remember, yeah. you know, hanging out with my boys. The release is coming out the next morning. We we, we show up Saturday morning early. <laughs> Somebody's on the line. Like that whole vibe. Yeah. Um. You don't really. I don't really necessarily see it too much over here. What do you? I mean, what do you say to that? Because you 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 said that there's 
a community here. Yeah, 100%. But it's just not as big, but it's tight. Well, I, I, I think, to too, the time is different, right? Like, Agreed. you're not really you're not really going to see people lined up around the corner anymore because we have apps and, right. and you don't bots need to. and right. all of that stuff. That's true. Um, I mean, there are still a few, like, you, you know, you go to center and, and all of that stuff, and you see folks lined around the corner for releases, and I, I feel like that's awesome. That reminds me that this is it's alive and well here. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, the sneaker culture here and is very much a community. Everybody relatively knows each other. Like if you're in the game, everybody knows each other. Um, there's obviously sneaker shows constantly. Mm-hmm. So I've been there for um, you, yeah. people are always there buying and trading and setting up their booths and all of that stuff. And like, the guys from Kixpo do a great job of, of really throwing a, an amazing event each year. We actually got to work with them last year and bring a little bit of female sneaker culture to a very machismo space, mm-hmm. which was an honor and and very awesome of them to extend the invitation. Um, and then you have you know folks like Kix 101, Frank, um, who really put on for the younger crowd. And, and I think one thing that I really love about Dallas sneaker culture is that there's a very, very intense desire to give back. Mm. Um, you know, whether you see Frank collecting shoes or the folks at Villa, uh, lending an ear or even like center. I've, I've worked with center to collect shoes before to donate to the homeless, but I think everybody really wants to give back and do something more. Um, and it, it, it very much is a close knit collective, I think. It's funny. It, it kind of reminds me of like the the whole outlook on churches, where you have the big church and the small church, right? The small church is more intimate. The big church is like, so like New York to me feels like the big church, <laughs> where here the community, um, it's much tighter. Um, you can interact. You can do a lot more. Well, I think I think that's perspective too, right? Mm-hmm. Because like you can be a part of the big church and actually be a part of it, mm-hmm. right? That's true. That's if true. you just go and sit there mm-hmm. and do nothing, then yeah, it feels like a big church. But if you're actually going and doing something amazing and using your gifts to help other people, mm-hmm. it doesn't feel so big. Like mm-hmm. that's one thing about New York that I love. Like whenever I go, you know, I'll go for sneaker events and stuff like that, but it still feels like everybody knows everyone. It's just a, a larger pool of people to know, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. So. So I want to ask you about, um, you know, when it comes to women in this game, if you want to call it the sneaker culture. Right. I always found that the stigma is a bit it's a bit weird because usually when you think of women, you think of the heels, you think of shoes. Mm -hmm. Right. You always think of shoes. Yeah. You think there's always that thing. (laughs) Right. You think of shoes and you think of women. But yet when it came to sneakers, it's almost like, you know, most women aren't that's they don't really they're not really into all of that. Yeah. So when you do come across a woman who's just as passionate as of purchasing sneakers mm-hmm. versus the heels and all the other stuff, um, I always found that a bit intriguing. But you said that there's there's obviously a community out there. Yeah. Um, how are you speaking to them? It's a little bit of a waymint moment when you see a girl who who probably has a better collection than you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, if we didn't, if there was no community, CNK wouldn't exist. Mm-hmm. CNK wouldn't have grown the way that it has. Um, but there's a there's a lot of women one thing one thing that i always try to remember especially now as we start seeing women taking more positions of power in the rise of sneaker culture in general you know just last year sneaker sales for women rose 37 percent. so now you have brands taking notice because dollars are now figuring into the limit right Mm -hmm. um and so now it's like almost everyone's a girl who loves sneakers, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas like two, three years ago, it was not a small collective because we've been everywhere, but now it's a little bit more saturated. Hmm? Don't hit this. Oh, my bad. (laughs) (laughs) I'm messing up, (laughs) y'all. No, now it's it's a little bit more saturated, but I will say that with C&K, we try to speak to every girl. Mm -hmm. Um, and you're not going to make everybody happy, but the one thing that I love about what we're doing at CNK is that we can appeal to everyone from the novice, the girl who has no sneakers in her closet, but she mm-hmm. knows that heels are not life, mm-hmm. <laughs> and she wants to buy a few pairs that look cute, to the girl who you know has equal both. She has both. She she's knowledgeable about sneakers, but but it's not necessarily everything that she wears. And then the, to the, the very seasoned girl, she doesn't need us for release info. She already understands that. She already knows where to cop her stuff. She probably has a connect at her local store, mm-hmm. right? That's really where but it's at. she finds the commonality because we're just like her. 
-hmm. you know we have the same qualms and we have the same issues and the same frustrations especially with brands that we give our money to who don't seem to listen to us Mm -hmm. so we tend to touch on a slew of demographics because we really are just like them and i think that's what makes us different and what sets us apart is the commonality we're not some big huge conglomerate conglomerate like mm-hmm. that is separate from the community we really are in this mm-hmm. every day we buy our shoes just like everybody else mm-hmm. so um we're investing too mm-hmm. and it's nice that girls are investing in us as well no that's awesome do, do you get a lot of women that give you feedback that say damn i'm happy that we ha- I, there's this platform absolutely that, I can, you that is the that? greatest feeling in the world like because I, we check our DMs. Like we, we actually like talk back and forth with people. People like will send us DMs and be like, I can't find these shoes. Can you help me? Mm -hmm. Um, and it's the most rewarding feeling to get a message and be like, yo, I'm really, really glad that you guys are here. I'm really glad that you guys are doing this Mm -hmm. or that, you know, those messages, like I really want to be a part of this. The, The way I built my team is through that girls who are like, I really like what you're doing. I want to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. And that in and of itself, lends to the building of the brand because these girls came in a very organic way because they love shoes and they love what we're trying to do and that's the one thing I try to make sure I did is surround myself with women a who are as much or if not more involved in the sneaker culture than I am but b girls who are smarter than me and Mm -hmm. who understand this from a different perspective you know like every single girl who who writes for us or works for us in some type of way is amazing at what she does in in some lane, right? Mm-hmm. And it's often a lane that I have no clue how to function in. And mm-hmm. you need that. You need people around you who can bring different ideas and different inputs. And um, and again, that, that just goes to show like we really are a very varied group. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it helps us actually con- combat that machismo culture side uh, that darker side of sneaker culture where women weren't really allowed Mm -hmm. right Um, especially because we pride on ourselves on tapping the women who were here before Mm -hmm. and trying to tell their stories especially with things like our CNK closet and our chick chats and things Mm -hmm. of that nature really trying to hone in on women who have been doing this for a while Mm -hmm. you know I I looked up some statistics and these are things that I'm sure you already know (laughs) um you know, because the whole sneaker culture with technology being involved, it's it's been a major shift now to where it's business. It's definitely big business. Yeah. And according it's to Forbes. Yeah. 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 Because <laughs> yeah. dudes, you know, there was times where people would try to sell through eBay or they'll try to sell through um, Instagram. But now it's like we got apps now. We got, you know, people <laughs> got just. Bots. Yeah, there's yeah. bots. There's, it's much more sophisticated, if you yeah. want to call that. But this is a number that you probably wear. It's a one billion dollar market in the secondary market when it comes to reselling sneakers. Yeah. Um, and that was as of 2015. So obviously that's that's probably still upwards, maybe even two billion at this point. Yeah. Um, do you uh, how do you feel about those that are more into it because of the money that they can get from it versus those people that actually maybe you just want to buy the sneakers to actually wear them? Um, do you I mean, feel a way about the people that do that just simply for the money? Uh, I I feel a way when I can't get something because mm-hmm. something's all sold out. Um, I mean, yeah, sometimes you feel a way. Like, you, you know, if you if you know a certain shoe is a certain price at retail and someone's selling it for five, six, seven times the amount, yeah, that that gets a little discouraging. But at the same time, you know, I can't not necessarily knock resellers because you know I've I've friends who resell. Mm-hmm. And they're feeding their families off that. No, oh, yeah. Um, and there's someone to buy it. Like, mm-hmm. let's be clear. Let's be yeah, clear. Somebody, it wouldn't yeah. work the if somebody was like, "Hex, nah, I'm not paying seven hundred dollars for That's this true. pair of shoes." That's true. But you know, luckily, we've seen the rise of brands like StockX, mm-hmm. um, where you're able to kind of see the value of your shoes. Because the one thing that I I always try to drive home, especially since I actually own a business that operates in sneakers is that my sneakers are a little bit of an investment you know if I ever fell on hard times I could go and I could sell my shoes and come up quick on rent right like Mm -hmm. so I think that it it, 
I'm not really the type of person that grumbles and looks at things from a oh woe is me perspective like if if you want the shoes you're gonna find a way to get them right. and you know I'm not gonna begrudge somebody else a hustle right mm-hmm. um, but at the same time I will say it's a little ridiculous um, the bot thing I think bothers me a little bit more than anything else mm-hmm. because that is essential that is taking away pairs from people who actually want to wear them right um, and so and it's in a it to me is in a very sneaky way you mm-hmm. know what I mean um, so that to me is a little bit discouraging I'd like to see some changes there especially in the bigger brands who have the ability to put some money behind technology to stop bots mm-hmm. um, but do I think it's going to stop or go away no yeah, I, yeah. I've learned not to complain about things that won't go away and Mm -hmm. instead think of a solution Mm -hmm. no no i agree with you a thousand percent yeah um i want to switch gears a little bit because you touched on it being um you know a business for you but you also have uh, a traditional nine to five i do and i want i wanted you to talk about how you're able to really balance uh the two of those things and your philosophy around what you mentioned to me the other day about you know being able to you know understanding that you don't want to leverage the proceeds from your business the first five years that having the job and being able to maybe even use that to funnel Mm -hmm. you know your business as opposed to taking from your business I thought that that was a a a great way to look at it I want you to speak on that a little bit more uh I mean well to answer the first part of your question I don't think I've figured out how to balance at all (laughs) I think I've learned how to prioritize Mm. um and I'm learning I'm content I'm still learning there are still some days where I'm just like I don't feel like it. Like I don't want to. I don't want to go to this job. Like mm-hmm. no more. But, <laughs> um, but I've learned how to prioritize. Um, I've really had to learn to to become a little bit more disciplined in how I spend my time. I can't watch TV mm. during the week. I can't do it. I love my Netflix like everybody else, but if I sit in front of Netflix anytime during hours, the week, nothing's time, getting yeah. done. And I have to fight that urge every day I get home from my nine to five to just take a shower and plop down in front of the TV. I have to fight that urge because I know that nothing is going to get done. I am the root of this, right? Mm-hmm. It, and that's one thing I was talking to my team about too. Like I can't ask you to do something that I fail to do all the time. And so I really had to start checking myself and being like, do you really need to do that? Mm -hmm. Um, One thing I do is I actually, (laughs) I take a post-it and I like fill it with five or six things and I can only focus on the things on that Mm post-it and check those off. Like I can't focus on the master list because if I do, I will get lost and I will curl up in a ball and cry and Mm -hmm. not get anything done. Mm -hmm. Um, But to to the second part of your question, yes, I have a nine to five. Um, one thing that I love about my nine to five is that it has taught me how, how to prioritize. It has forced me to Mm. prioritize because I would get fired if I wasn't doing what I needed to do there. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, you're right. Like I, I'm a firm believer that seven sources of income is absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, especially in this economy, especially in this climate, it's super important for us to be really smart about where our money is coming from. Mm -hmm. Um, And so for me, it just didn't, the want is there, yeah. Would would I love to leave? Uh, Absolutely. But I'm very aware that most businesses fail in the first three years. Correct. I'm coming up. I used to work for a bank, so I'm I'm very much aware of that. I'm coming up (laughs) on my third year, and we have not failed yet. Awesome. Are are we necessarily making the income I would like us to? No, but that's why I'm learning how to diversify the income that we can bring in through one business, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but but it also takes a lot. It, it takes a lot of money to run a business and to start a business. And so, yeah, I, my dream feeder has been a blessing, right? It, it's allowed me to to pay people when you know we did we had an off month. Right. That's the thing that people don't talk about with entrepreneurship. They don't talk about the days when, you know, you're a grown you're a grown woman, but you have like five dollars in your bank account because you just had to pay all of these bills to you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. they don't talk about that. That's they the glamorize reality. it and That's you true. see people like doing quote unquote big things on Instagram, but let's be clear, like that's a highlight reel. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like that's a highlight reel. There are lots of nights where I'm just like, why couldn't I just be happy with mm-hmm. a nine to five? Mm-hmm. But 
there's absolutely no way that I'm I'm happy with that. Right. Some people are. Kudos to them, but mm -hmm. I'm not one of them. I know eventually this will become my full time, but right now it's smarter for me and it's smarter for the growth of my business. I would be selling my business short mm -hmm. if I pocketed what we earned to pay my personal bills. And sure. I think that's where a lot of people fail before they even start mm -hmm. is they you don't reinvest back into it. Exactly. You're not reinvesting into your dream. Mm -hmm. You're reinvesting into yourself. And and that's that's a little bit of a problem. Right? What's what's the big picture goal for you with um, CNK? You know, looking five years down the line or what's what's obviously you wanted to continually grow. Yeah. But what's the immediate probably big picture for you? I think any anybody in any space should want to be the best. Mm -hmm. um, I want CNK or CNK will. I'm learning how to speak. Yeah, you got to speak into, into existence, existence, right? Yes. Manifestation, Manifestation is very real. Um, but CNK will be the the top mm -hmm. sneaker website in the nation for women. Mm -hmm. um, CNK will be a store. Mm. That is, that is a goal of mine. But ultimately, the goal is to serve women. Mm -hmm. The goal is to serve and to not only sell shoes or sell a lifestyle or, you know, sell some clothes. The goal is to really help women succeed and to show them how we did it, mm -hmm. right? Um, one thing we started at the beginning of it was something called Chickspiration. And that still is very alive and well. That's the name of my company. Mm -hmm. um, but it really is all about empowering women in spaces, not only just from seeing you do it, but trying to get them the information necessary in order to do it themselves. We talked mm -hmm. about this yesterday. A lot of times people will show you what they did or show, show you the, the result, the, of, the result mm -hmm. of their success or tell you their story, but not a lot of people can help you achieve that too. Yeah, it's a big difference. Um, and that's one thing that I really want to invest in. I want to invest in, you know, helping girls grow themselves and, showing you like the ins and outs of starting something like a lot of people don't know like y you can't just get a logo and call yourself mm -hmm. a brand there's mm -hmm. there's a very real business end to the back of this like if you don't know somebody could steal your stuff like it's very very real and I think a lot of people they they think that they think there's an easy route to this mm -hmm. um, I would rather teach people what I know and also learn mm -hmm. um and so that's CNK will be a, a, a space of servitude mm -hmm. um, in the next five years. Definitely. Oh, yeah. We, we talking into existence. Definitely going to happen. Yeah. Um, I wanted to run something by you. I don't know if you were aware. I was I was looking at some stuff this morning and I noticed Lena Waithe. I don't know if you're familiar with who she is. Yes. OK, cool. <laughs> OK, because I was like, oh, I got to explain to her. Um, She's, I don't know if you're aware, but she's actually going to help produce a show about sneaker called, culture. Right. Yeah. Um, called You Ain't Got These. Yeah. And um, it's focusing on sneaker culture, like you said. Um, and it's going to be potentially streaming on a platform called Quibi, um, which I, I'm assuming it stands for like Quick Bites, but mm. they can just kind of use the first three and the first two of the second word. Um, but it's Quick Bites of Captivating Entertainment. Um, what, do you, what do you think about that? Like them having. A, so it's going to be a series. Mm -hmm. It's going to be on that. It's it's going to be streamed through that app, which goes to show you again the the technology aspect of it and how they're trying to introduce this into the market. Um, but what do you think something like that will do to even? I'm thinking about even what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Having something like that out there now. Um, again, I don't know. See, here's the thing though. I don't know if it's specifically targeting women. Or just the actual culture. I mean, I would sides? think I would think that there's some. She's a woman, so right. I would think that there is some specialty there, right. um, some special kind of angle. Um, I'm all for it. I'm all for anything that enriches the culture and moves it forward. Um, I'm all for anything that sparks a conversation and sparks a dialogue. And more than anything, I'm more. F I'm all for anything that provides more jobs, especially for women in this industry. Mm -hmm. um, gives more women a seat at the table. Mm -hmm. and uh, an ability to make decisions. So I, I, I'm excited to see what it is. I mean, she's she's an Oscar winner. Like, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. she, she's, yeah, she's gonna, written and produced she's, before. Yeah, she's going so. to produce some good work. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just excited to see the angle that she takes with it. Um, 
Let me know if I can be on it, though. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm trying, I'm trying to plug you in. I'm yeah. saying you might want to send I, out I didn't, a little. I don't know if it's going to be a scripted series or if it's True. supposed to be like a more of a reality type of a, a vibe. But mm. um, I'm all for anything that moves the culture forward. I think anyone who can tell this story or tell their story in an authentic way deserves a shot. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's about the shoes. So I'll be there. So you've like you you've gone to different events. Yeah. Right. Um, what's an event that you've been to that. You know, you probably were sitting there like, damn, what am I doing here? Like, this is like, how did I get here? Like surreal. Yeah. Like, this is dope. Like, how did I get here? Um, all right. So I had one of those moments literally like a few weeks ago mm. or about a month and a half ago. So um, I just celebrated my birthday and I decided. Leo in the building. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Good king. people. Good people. The king. <laughs> Hey, you got the other A, hey, 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 hey. um, right. So I just celebrated my birthday and I decided to go on a solo retreat, like really just to get mm-hmm. more centered, really talk to God and really um, commit the plans that I have for CNK and for another platform that I'm running with my best friend, Brittany, called Bean and Cream, really committing those thoughts and plans and praying over them, right? Mm-hmm. And finding a, a space, right? So literally... Uh, I got still, got really still and mm. literally got a message, so, so got a message and I was basically told, hey, we need you to fly out to New York to cover something. Um, you know, I'm, I've grown, we've grown our relationship with Nike quite a bit since we started, which is a blessing and got a call from my guy and was like, we need you. And so I was like, okay, or, you know, what's it about? Come to find out it is the release event for Virgil and Serena's Queen collection. Um, Virgil's doing some big things out there. Virgil's man. doing some big things. Serena's doing some big things. And it was amazing to be surrounded by that that type of greatness, right? Mm-hmm. When, when people say that greatness is in the air, mm-hmm. it's very, very real. And it's very inspiring. And I had a moment where I was just like, yo, like sneakers has brought me so many places that I wouldn't have had access to mm-hmm. if not for going with my gut and leaving behind something that I'd worked really hard for to take on something new and unknown. Um, and so that moment when, cause Serena Williams is on my vision board, mm. right? It's been that's, on my vision we, board. We call that, that's rarefied air. That's what <laughs> yeah, it's called. Right? That, that is what you was trying to describe. Yeah. That's rarefied air. She's on my vision board. She's been on my vision board for years. She's like literally my best friend in my head. Like mm-hmm. she doesn't know me, but she's my best friend in my head. And <laughs> she was in front of me and I got to meet her and I was just like, yes, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm right where I need to be. Mm -hmm. I'm on my trajectory. Mm -hmm. I got this. Let's go. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, it put a battery in my back for real, Mm -hmm. but it was a humbling moment, but also a very, a moment of extreme gratitude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's, uh, that's deep. That's awesome. Um, I want to do some some rapid fire <laughs> questions, if you want to call it that, because um, it's funny. I, I have a group of friends of mine um, who are deep into the sneaker culture, and I, and I told them I'd be sitting down with you. Right. <laughs> and they a few of them ended up following you. And I was like, yo, do, you know, is there any questions you want me to ask her or anything? You know, so they, they, they gave me a few questions. Right. And so I'm just I'm just going to throw them at you. Okay. Well, first thing, this is a little different, but um, favorite sports team, basketball team. My favorite basketball team mm-hmm. is going to be the Minnesota Timberwolves because that's where I'm from. Okay, okay. And I'm not I'm not a huge basketball fan. Okay, okay. I'm more of a football fan. <laughs> okay. Favorite shoe? Favorite shoe ever? Mm-hmm. The Nike Cortez. Mm. Always. Okay. It will always, always be classic to me. Okay. Now, if you ask me to list my five, that's different. <laughs> What's your, you have a top five? What's your top yeah, five? Yeah, a top five. All right, so Cortez is going to be number one. Um, the... Jordan three, number two, mm-hmm. uh, Air Force one, number three. Mm. Gotta have the Air Force. Got, got uptown, to. baby. Got Uptowns. To. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number four. Uh, number four is going to be the Talaria. Mm-hmm. Cause makes that? Nike. Nike? Talaria? Yeah, the Talaria. Okay. I was never able to get them. And so, mm. and that was, so that's that was one that has, one of the next questions. It still eludes me. Like mm-hmm. I still don't have a pair of Talarias. So there's that. And then number five, uh, probably the Jordan 12. 
Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like them drilling twelves. Yeah. Um, <laughs> see, that was one of the questions though. Was gonna uh, another question was gonna be, what's the one shoe that you wanted that that just eludes you? There's always that one shoe that you just. And I think you just mentioned it. Okay. Yeah. The t- well. No, there's one shoe that that constantly eludes me, and that's the shattered backboard. Mm, yes. I've missed all of the releases yes. of the shattered backboard. Mm-hmm. All of them. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I cry every time. Like, So they just released a women's version like a few months ago, Jordan Women, and shout out to them, just released the shattered backboard satin, and I wanted it so bad. Mm-hmm. But I didn't get it because business. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. Sometimes you got to take a step back, take 10 steps forward. Right. Um, what's and I, I don't know if you mentioned it before, but like what's the um, what was the one shoe that that really where you were just like, damn, I love these pair of shoes. Uh, I don't know if it's the Cortez cause being that you love. But do you, could you remember like what was that first shoe where you're just like, OK, yeah, I like this. Like I'm, I'm going to be buying a couple more pairs of sneakers. Like mm. usually there's that one shoe you put on and you're just like I mean it's always been the Cortez for me. I don't know if it's because it was like my first like actual shoe shoe. Um but it it always just fits just right. It always goes with everything for me. Mm-hmm. Um and you can decorate them to high heavens like mm-hmm. you can customize those mugs and they mm-hmm. still look clean like I just I I love the Cortez. That's my bar none, my favorite shoe. If somebody was like, you can never buy another one for the rest of your life, it's that either that or like one shoe that I really absolutely love are my Prestos. Mm. Love my Prestos. Mm-hmm. Like comfortable. I came in in some Prestos today. Like love my Prestos. Very comfortable, um, especially with off white. Now you know designing some stuff for them, got them looking pretty clean. <laughs> um, this is a two parter. Yeah, checks. Or stripes, and what do you feel about people who wear both? So you hit me with the Drake lyric number one, <laughs> which is hilarious. You gotta um, pick one. <laughs> no, well, you I don't. don't have to pick one. <laughs> you right, you right. I roll both, but I'm just saying. I mean, both pay my bills, so <laughs> so um, we won't be choosing mm-hmm. either or. I will say, Let's like, I've been I've been a Nike girl since I was a, a kid, mm-hmm. but I will say that Adidas has some really dope options. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love like the Falcon that they they just came out with, and obviously Ultra Boost has always been or has been for the last few years a big big mainstay especially in my closet um the Nikki runner they changed it to like the 59 like 83 i didn't even bother to memorize the numbers like i still call it the Nikki runner mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah so i'm gonna say both on that one mm-hmm. uh what was the second part of the question the second part is uh, what do you feel about uh people who wear both at Maybe. the same time yeah like there's, there's like a, i feel like it's mad disrespectful sin. yeah it's very disrespectful <laughs> and i feel like it's only it's only folks like born after 93 yeah that are doing that stop it <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I feel you. I, I can't you. stand a, a pair of Adidas run mm-hmm. a track pants mm-hmm. and a Nike shoe. Like mm-hmm. it's just it's just so it's disrespectful. Blasphemy, man. It's, it's real crazy <laughs> out here. It's, I feel like y'all are real reckless right now. It's really tough. It's really <laughs> tough. It's funny we were talking about like um, the Timberlands and not that whole stigma with New yeah. York and the big Timberland that's out there and it's just certain <laughs> things. It's a certain culture. Certain things that are in culture. It's just like it's kind of like even with the with the um. The Air Forces. Yeah. Like, if you're going to get the high, like, don't get the one with the strap. Because <laughs> it's just like, nah, I don't do those. Like, there's just certain things you just, like, you know it. You know what I mean? Make sure that you don't you don't lace it all the way up yeah, to the like, top. Yeah, like, there's no me lacing like, them all the way up. It's just certain things you just do not, see. Do not yank and tie. It's don't so funny. Because in New York, like, you know, if my boys will take the train and they'll see something crazy, they'll send me a pic. Like, yo, don't do this. <laughs> and then they'll it. just send me a picture. It's like, damn, my man got on the Adidas joggers with the Nikes or he got the, it's we just actually looking posted crazy. something about that on CNK's Instagram like a year and a half ago. We got so much like backlash. I'm going to wear what Flame. I want. I'm about it. They flamed you. Okay. <laughs> you, you talking real reckless and you real mad because like, we touched a nerve. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> do you, do you have like your friends, like are they kind of into it the way you're into it here or do you just kind of 
you know, using CNK, like, is your outlet where you connect with people outside of your immediate circle? Like, how's it in your immediate circle? I have a very small circle. Um, but, like, my best friend, Brittany, she is, I mean, she, I wouldn't consider her, like, I wouldn't call her, like, a sneakerhead or, you know, whatever. But she's all the way down to wear sneakers with me to any formal function. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no matter how dressy the actual gotta see you dress do that. code I gotta is. See, you pull, see, women could pull that off a little bit. Listen, judge me. You've done it. Go ahead, judge me. Do, <laughs> do what you want to do. I'm going to do what I want. Um, <laughs> um, but I, I would say, like, you know, my business partner, Cassidy, like, that's that's my role dog right there. So she's she's probably bigger than I am. Like, she's the biggest Jordan 1 fan Oh, ever, one of those, yeah. I had a friend ever. like that. Like she has like all of the pits. She has a t- she has Shadows, a crap ton. She everything. named her son Jordan after Jordan because Jordans are her favorite shoes. So so She's you see you one. see where that is. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like most of the most of the girls around me are definitely sneaker aficionados. Like mm-hmm. they know their way around a a Foot Locker. <laughs> <laughs> do you, do you get into like? <laughs> I want to say, does it bother you when guys are probably really surprised that you're into, you know, the things that you're into, you're into particularly, you know, the sneaker culture? Like, does does it take guys back or do you kind of do you get upset that it takes guys back? No, no. I feel like there's there, there's so many things to be upset about in the world. That's very cosmetic. Mm-hmm. So, no, I don't get upset about that. But the one thing that I will not do is like, you're not going to quiz me, bruh. Mm. Like you're not gonna come up to me and be like, "Well, when was this sneaker released?" Mm. Like, nah, <laughs> you can walk away. That's not gonna happen. Matter of fact, I could know the answer and not say anything to you because yeah. I'm just petty like that sometimes. <laughs> like, nah. <laughs> Have you had bad experiences like that? Like when you're just out. It could be in whatever environment, whether it was at an event. Probably not so much at an event, but like just in your personal interactions. I wouldn't say that I've had bad experiences. I have felt vibes. You know, like I'm a very vibey person. I've definitely felt like, I've definitely felt like, yo, people don't understand why I'm here or why I'm in this room or why I'm making this decision. And But it, then that I'm always reminding myself, like, that's not my problem. You know what I mean? Like my, my, my job is to be here. I mean, like, for example, my very first Nike, <laughs> my very first Nike event, uh, was a trip to a media trip to Austin to cover Katie's new shoe release, and Kevin I, Durant. Yeah, okay. I was one of two women there in a media pool of people asking questions and stuff like that. And I mean, to be honest with you, I just had to step up. I, you know what I mean? Like it, it became one of those things. Either you're going to shrink and be scared, or you're going to step up and ask your question and and earn this respect. How long you been in Dallas? 11 years. Okay. So a, a lot of, so basically all the stuff that you're mentioning, and that's why I wanted to make sure happened while you were here. Cause I find that interesting that you're, you're doing all these things, mm-hmm. you're going to all these places and you're, you're doing it from Dallas. Dallas. Yeah. And I think it, it kind of goes back to what we talked about in the beginning where, you know, your low, your locale doesn't have to be your box, right? Like yeah. you, you don't have to be in LA. You don't have to be in New York per se. You don't, have to be in those places, Chicago, wherever um, you think things are happening, you can be in a place that's probably people don't think would be into it or people um, there would have that interest, but you're making that happen. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. Like I've, I've had my doubts and have my moments where I'm like, I should move to LA or Mm -hmm. I should move to New York. Like I think every person with an entrepreneurial spirit has thought, okay, well, what if I move to the big, big cities, right? Like Dallas is not a, a, a cupcake city. I'm not in the middle mm-hmm. of Mayberry here. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, and it's grown so much over the last 11 years. We're literally three hours away from what the second or third largest city in the mm-hmm. nation in Houston. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I'm I'm in a big metropolitan area, but I have toyed with the idea of moving to New York or to LA. But the more that I think about it, the more that I meditate on it, the more that I pray on it, it's the answer always comes back to Dallas because I could move somewhere else and yeah, there might be more opportunities there, but that's not where it's it's my purpose to serve right now. 
And I feel like if you try to rush the universe, mm -hmm. you're going you're going to get a big surprise and probably rent you can't pay. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We joked about that earlier. <laughs> like yeah, so, that's a fact. I think you know any time that I've toyed with that idea, nothing comes to fruition, and I have to take a step back and be like, why do you really want to do that? Mm -hmm. Like, is it because you can't utilize your gifts and serve where you are? Or is it because you want shine? You know, and I'm glad you said that, um, because I think your purpose is definitely important mm -hmm. um, in, in really in every aspect of your life, but especially the things that you're putting your heart into. Like you, it has to be something that you want to really do and you have to have a good reason to do it because there's going to be those bad times like yeah. we talked about there's going to be times where you got to sacrifice there has a lot to be a reason that sustains you yes over a long period of time or else the same after mind, the glitz or the the initial adrenaline rush is gone mm -hmm. there has to be something that sustains the vision so you you, you strike me as someone who's who's because you, you've mentioned a couple of times just in talking about you know your faith and and i assume you're a very spiritual person then um does that I'm assuming that was kind of what helps ground you or kind of keeps you focused on your goals. 100%. Like I can't really, I, I really have to stop myself because I, I definitely have like an addictive personality. I'm definitely a workaholic. Mm -hmm. um, I, defin <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, def I definitely find myself like having to stop and be like, not my will, mm -hmm, <laughs> not my will, mm -hmm, even mm -hmm. though it looks better. <laughs> like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not about me. Like I have to remind myself of that. And you know, my faith really grounds me, but also like, come on, I'm not here just for myself. I'm not here just to, to, to do this. I'm, I'm here to enrich the lives of other people in some way, shape or form. And you never know how small or how large your in impact can be from the smallest thing. Right. So I think one thing, too, is that my faith really humbles me mm -hmm. in moments that I need that humbling because, like, you know, CMK has grown quite a bit. Like, it's not something that's a, a hobby anymore. And I could get really lost in that. Mm -hmm. um, I could get really lost in trying to make that my identity. Mm -hmm. um, but this is... It, it, CMK is definitely something that I want to be a legacy. I want to, you know, leave oppor or build opportunities for my children and, you know, for other people's children. But I can't take it with me. Mm -hmm. And That's I would true. I would rather be a good person and um, and know that I'm doing something that is for something so much bigger than myself than to just be stuck in in my own head you know mm -hmm. my own wants mm -hmm. so yeah faith i feel like faith's really important in whatever you believe in like i i think believing in something that's better or that's bigger than yourself is so necessary especially for people like entrepreneurial people like mm -hmm. because it gets really tough mm -hmm. it gets really tough it gets really discouraging and if you just believe in yourself yeah mm, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You've got to believe that there's a bigger purpose. Mm -hmm. You've got to believe that there's a reason why you go through what you go through and why you, you know, endure the disappointments and why the highs are are so much higher, you know? Mm -hmm. You have to or else you just get lost in this. And it's very easy to get lost in, especially very with easy. social media. It's very um, easy. You know, everything that's out there, if you don't really have a purpose. Comparison you know. is very real. Yes. Comparison is very real and it's um, there are days where I'm just like, no Instagram today. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. not happening today. <laughs> because comparison is real. And when you start comparing, it, when you start comparing yourself, like it really is the thief of every bit of joy yeah, that you could possibly sure. have. So yeah, got to stay, got to stay rooted. Do you have siblings? I do. How I have many? Brothers. I have four brothers. Four, so you don't, you don't need. I'm the youngest and the only girl. What? So there's that. <laughs> It's funny, I'm the, I'm the only boy in the family. I have uh, three sisters. So you have four brothers. So um, what do they think about, like, are they kind of into the sneakers, into the culture as well? Or? No. No. Like, they kinda do they're all thing. way older than me. Oh, yeah, you did say they're yeah. yeah, they're okay. all, like, way older than me. So they're, like, they're into real estate. <laughs> <laughs> 
in money market accounts. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, for, it, it, it's funny though, the sneaker <laughs> culture is turning into that. I mean, like we talked about with StockX, like they have an index now yeah. to track I feel like that, that was sneakers. such a smart idea. I wish I thought of it. I know. You it was such a smart the idea. The GOAT app. Oh, you know what I wanted to ask you? Uh, um, I didn't know if you was pr- kind of aware because you said you're not really big into sports but like i don't oh, know no, if it I'm, came across. I'm big into yeah? sports i'm okay. just not the biggest basketball fan okay okay got it yeah um kyle kuzma right he's um he plays for the lakers okay um he just signed a deal with goat which you i don't know if you, yeah. you're probably familiar with goat right goat, the and, app. goat and flight club merged i think right yeah. exactly um and he's the first athlete to do so and i was looking into it and i thought it was a pretty intriguing um, connection because he he has a deal with Nike, mm-hmm. so my understanding usually is that okay when you sign up with Nike you can't be wearing Reeboks if you sign up with Adidas you you're not wearing Nikes if they're endorsing you but he's a brand ambassador and I think what's cool about it is that they're gonna be it's gonna be Nikes that he's gonna be getting but he's gonna be getting a lot of like the retro stuff yeah I'm, I was just about to say they're yeah. letting him wear yeah they're not going yeah he's not going that's never gonna fly he's not like, gonna, yeah Nike's not <laughs> like, I don't know what, <laughs> what like, he was thinking you but way that's too not much. going to happen and now, I know Go ain't cutting them Nike money <laughs> yeah. so Nike be like look <laughs> it wasn't with me shooting in the gym <laughs> big bang take little bang do you want this money or not <laughs> you know what I mean cause you can't fact, do both not even gonna give you a choice bye yeah yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> you could you imagine he's like nah nah we good go with this and they just That's said be like okay Ben Simmons yeah, yeah. <laughs> would you like this contract <laughs> what <laughs> he's so already I'm a Nike athlete I think yeah I think yeah yeah he's uh, yeah cause he, he's cool with LeBron you know LeBron's with Nike so he's, he's there's no LeBron way he's getting Nike. out of that Listen, LeBron exactly. and Serena yeah got exactly. their own buildings oh <laughs> But I have wanted to get your thoughts on because I mean obviously I think it's pretty cool yeah. didn't know how if you were aware of it if you kind of Thought it was pretty yeah, I heard dope. the whispers of it. I think um, like that could be the beginning. Anything, of something. anything that changes the game or changes the landscape a little bit, I think, like anything that perks your ears up, like, oh wait, what, what's mm-hmm. happening? I think that's really good, mm-hmm. right? I agree. Um, and so I, I'm excited to see what they do with that. It's obviously go got dough now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so I figured. I figured. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure. I, I'm not sure if they did like. Series three funding or anything like that, but mm-hmm. um, I think I think it's awesome. I would like to see just and this is just me personally. I would like to see uh, like a female brand ambassador mm-hmm. as well, um, maybe like Maya Moore or mm-hmm. um, or even uh, God, what's her name? She's awesome, um, Skylar Diggins, mm-hmm. especially since she's with Puma now. Mm-hmm. It would be interesting to see like what she, what retro she would get or mm-hmm. you know whatever um and maybe that's on the you know on the list mm-hmm. um, but i, I would I'm like sure to see more bad. women kind of involved in some of these big huge moves that some mm-hmm. of these brands are making um i think a lot of people are asleep on on that audience mm-hmm. so no i agree I, I think it's a it's a great look for goat um, it's a great Definitely. way for them to to kind of build their brand. I see how it makes sense on both sides. I feel like the prices um, of a lot of shoes are going to go up, though. Right, so, right. Because people are going to be so seeing be them on the court. be ready to be and mad. I think the timing is perfect because the NBA over the summer had just said that um, and it's, you can it's, you wear, can wear whatever shoe. you want. Yeah. So I think I, I know all the, the shoe news with the NBA. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> I figured I was like, ah, right, you gotta know that much. You gotta know that I know. much. So I what's know the sport? The, what's the sport that you? Uh, is there? Is it football? Is it baseball? Is it? Just so I used to play tennis. Okay, that was okay. my thing. I used to play tennis, so um, I, I watch like all of the opens. Like it's on my bucket list to go to the U.S. Open next year. Okay. Like all that. Um, so yes, tennis is one of my favorites. Football is one of my favorites. So it broke my heart that I can't watch it anymore, or I'm mm. choosing not to watch it anymore. Okay. Who's your um, team? Was it the Cowboys? Minnesota Vikings. Was it the Vikings? Always okay. and forever. Okay. I come from like the Randy Moss, Chris Carter, mm. uh, Robert Smith era, you know, like mm-hmm. uh, airing them out mm-hmm. for like 90 yards and mm-hmm. Randy two, two step right there in that mm-hmm. corner. Like that's where I come from. Far played there a little yes. bit. Yes. So like yeah. Robert Griffith mm-hmm. lead, leading, leading the, the secondary, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like. Mm-hmm. I come from that. Dante, mm-hmm. 
Adrian him Peterson. For a loop. Yeah. Even like, even, <laughs> even Gary, the little kicker, like hidden mm-hmm. everything. Like, I think he had like the highest kick percentage in, in the league in like 98, 99. Like, mm-hmm. but yeah, that's, that, that's my team right there. Mm-hmm. I was around like when Randy was like, you know, muffin meter maids and stuff in Minneapolis. Like, <laughs> that's a long time ago, man. It was. I'm that's old. A long time. What do you want from me? That's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, I, we've been talking for a while. Um, we covered a lot of Sorry, things. Y'all. Nah, that's good stuff. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. <laughs> I told her the time was going to go by quick. Um, but what was there anything I didn't cover? Was there anything you wanted to, to touch on? Um, no, I mean, look out for kind of what we have in store. Um, I'm excited for what this new year will bring for CNK. We're, um, you know, you hear it here first. We're relaunching the website. What? No one knows Exclusives. Yet. I yeah. love milk for anything. No. Exclusives. No one knows yet. So, okay. Uh, relaunching the website mm-hmm. and um, and some really cool things coming. Like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm excited to see what we do and just excited to build our team and um, and just see how we grow. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, if you if you dig inspirational stuff, my, myself and my best friend, Brittany, Brittany runs uh, fitbybrit.com. And it's all about health and wellness and living your best life. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she and I actually run a, an Instagram account called uh, It's Bean and Cream. Okay. And um, we actually talk very openly about some of our struggles mm-hmm. um, as women, especially as black women, mm-hmm. um, when it seems like the world is just too damn much. <laughs> <laughs> um, so much. There's a lot, so, going, on. There's a lot um, going on. So I, I do that, and that's very, very cathartic for me, very therapeutic. Um, but yeah, so stay tuned for what we have have coming. I'm I'm really excited to share with y'all. That's awesome. So before before we go, let let everyone know um, where to find you or your Instagram. Yeah. Shout out to the website one more time. Yeah. So website is www.cnkdaily.com. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram at cnkdaily um, on all the social channels at cnkdaily, and then my personal is call her Chanlo. So that's what's up. Holla at me. That's what's Let up. Let me know how I did. Yeah. <laughs> Constructive criticism, please. Definitely, <laughs> definitely make sure you spam her page. Tell her you seen the podcast. <laughs> tell her how dope it is and, and she killed it and all that good stuff. Yeah. So thank you guys uh, for watching. Um, if you're listening to it on iTunes, uh, you can find this podcast on iTunes, Podbean, Spotify, really anywhere that you listen to the podcast. And if you're watching this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, um, leave your comments down below, hit the thumbs up, all that good stuff. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching. Peace and love. We out. Bye.